Oh, Mike, I'm so glad you're here. Love the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know that's that's important. Yes. Loving the Lord and not just loving the Lord, but loving Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right. A lot of people say they love the Lord, but their actions don't follow. So we have to love the Lord in our actions to back up our words. Praise the Lord. Would you stand? Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. we come before you tonight. So thankful, Lord God, to be in the house of the Lord. Have your way in this earth. To lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah. To exalt you. You said you desire the praises of your people. Lord, we pray that we would just exalt your name. That we would lift you up higher. Praise the Lord than anything. Praise the Lord that you be exalted. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's start out with singing that song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh,
months ago. You sent that song, then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great thou art. You know how people, they, when they're engaged or whatever, and they start to say the sing the national anthem, and people, the guys take their hats off and put their hands on their hearts. And I said, you know, what's even greater is our God. Praise God, because He represents everything. Hallelujah. All of us, everything we are, Amen. we owe to God. Hallelujah. So let's sing this song. Let's sing it unto the Lord. How great thou art. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in my soul, my Savior, God to
identify which, you can be saved. Only in the name of Jesus. I want to say just as the Davis has come, we want to thank everyone that's come out to be in the house of the Lord. My sister-in-law, Chris, came in. And others that have come in, the devil and Lloyd and his mom came tonight. We just appreciate you being here. Yes. And may the Lord richly bless you. And I want to thank again, give a special thanks to Brother Mike. Yeah. To fill in for us tonight. My piano player was sick. And so continue to pray for Brother Steve. And without further ado, Brother Davis, Sister Davis, come and take your liberty in the Lord. Is it all that? 
trying to learn how to operate your no, it's always been on. Oh, it's always been on. <laughs> Alright, let's try one more time. When I'm reading, when I'm reading, oh, precious girl.
ironic tonight. Hardly ever happens that her title of her song and the title of my message goes hand in hand. Who but God? And we're going to preach for a little while about who but God? Uh -huh. Nobody else. Right. It's all about Him. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's take the Word of God and turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse number 19. To be so kind as to stand once again for the reading of God's Word. Philippians chapter 4 verse number 19. The writer said, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, tonight's message is not going to be about supplying our needs. I will explain to you in just a moment what this is about. But I want you to Go to the Lord and pray with me, and I want you to declare that He's your God. When we pray, just say, Lord, you're my God. Yes. You're my best friend. You are my everything. Oh. We're going to talk about who but God. Shall we pray together? Father in heaven tonight, we are so grateful and so thankful that you are everlasting God. You are the same yesterday. And I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would minister in a very special way in this house. And, oh God, let this congregation catch the fire from this message. Let them see the power of your word in this message. And I pray, Holy Spirit, when we leave this service, we're all going to be able to say, It has been good once again to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. And we'll forever thank you and praise you for it all. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people shouted, Amen, amen, amen. And amen. God bless you as you're seated and do it. For those that don't know, when you use the word amen, you are just adding to so be it. That's what we say amen for. So be it to God's word. Now, I'm not preaching that I just mentioned to you about God supplying our need to but we know He can. That's another message for another day. But I'm borrowing the phrase from Philippians 4 19 when He said, But my God. So I want you to understand I'm not uh, leading you astray on the, the Scripture and then preaching something different. I'm just borrowing the phrase, But my God. If I understand correctly in my research, this is the only scripture in the Bible that said, but my God. And so we're going to take you on a journey about our God. First of all, I want to share God's resume with you. This will be a little bit different approach, something maybe you've never heard just like this, but that's okay. We may learn something tonight. God has a resume. I think everybody knows what a resume is. A resume comes with a customized letter expressing a specific job or qualifications of a person. Now, if you ever have applied for a job, did you take pride in your letter? Or did you just say, well, I'm a jack of all trades and I can do about anything and submit it? No, you don't do that. You take pride in that customized letter. They tell you the better the letter is, the more chances of getting a job. Is that correct? Right. Sure it is. And so we're going to give you a little resume, in other words, some of the qualifications uh, that our God has. Our God has many qualifications, so far more than you and I ever thought about having. And so when we talk about a resume, uh, it comes with a customized letter, again, uh, expressing a specific job or qualifications of a person. Now, he's not just some God. Y'all help me here tonight. We'll have church. Amen. He's not just some God. Uh, but listen to me, church. Uh, he is the God of this universe. Amen. He's not just some God out of the universe, but He is our God. Somebody say, He's my God. My God. He is my God. Not just some 
God out there. There are many gods around this world, but there's only one true and living God the Bible declares to you and I tonight. And how often do we say God is good all the time, all the time, but God is good. Let's do that together, and I want you to get involved because I'm going to get you to interact with me here tonight. So I'm going to say, God is good all the time. What about eight or ten of you believe in what I'm saying? God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. And so we talk about God being good all the time, and all the time Him being good to us. Now notice something here tonight. I want to ask a question. Has God been good to anybody in this house? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. God has been good to us. He's a lot better to us than we are to Him for sure. So God has been good to every one of us. So we're going to start talking about the resume of God and what His qualifications are. And I want to ask you tonight, where did God bring you from? He brought you from a life of sin, did He not? Yes. Oh, you was bound in bondage. The same things in this world had you downtrodden. But we're looking here tonight when I ask you, where has God brought you from? And Isaiah the prophet begins to explain. He tells us in Isaiah 45 and verse 2 that he made our crooked places straight. Amen. He made our crooked places straight. I'm telling you, I've heard people say, oh, he was mean as a one-eyed moccasin. Now, I don't know how mean that is. I've never seen a one-eyed moccasin, but I've heard that adage before. I, Oh, he cusses like a sailor. Well, I've never been a sailor, so I don't know what that represents. But we've heard these little phrases all along the way. But thank God when you get saved, he straightens out those crooked paths and makes them right. Amen? Amen. What a God we serve here tonight. Who but God can change your life, my brothers and sisters? Who but God can change a wretched man? A wretched man is a life of misery, a life of meanness, a life of evil. And who but God can change a wretched man's life and cap all the drunkard to quit his drinking? Let me tell you, somebody says once a drunk, always a drunk. I don't buy that stuff. But when Jesus shut up the behind that, when Jesus sets a man free, he is free indeed, amen. You don't have to declare, well, I'm just a, one of those kind of guys that I used to be a drunkard and I'm a drunkard by name, but no, uh, you are now the most high God, part of the most high God and the living God, I should say. Uh, and let me tell you, folks, uh, when those things pass away, uh, who but God can change your life? Uh, who but God can take a wretched man and call that drunkard uh, to quit drinking uh, and that drug addict set free? Amen. I will never forget the church I retired from. We had a praise team leader. And to look at her, you would have never have known it. But she was a meth addict. She was on drugs so heavy. Her husband would tell me that when he would come home from work, she'd just be plastered. She'd be laid out under this drug addict condition. And she was a mess. She was a mess. And God got a hold of that girl and transformed her life. She got on the praise team, started doing ministry, started working for God. Don't let nobody tell you just because you got a family member or a friend that's bound by addiction that cannot be free. Who but God can change him? Man can change him. Doctors can only help you to try to prevent it. But who but God can change and transform a person's life? Has God done anything for anybody in the house? Do you remember Remember where God brought you from? Do you remember how you was lost and undone without God or a son? But Jesus reached a way down his hand and he picked you up and he took you out of miry clay and he put your feet up on a rock and established your door. Somebody give him some praise at this house. Great and 
miraculous thing. Who, who but God, now listen to me, I'm going to tell you a story. Who but God can transform a man's life like John Newton? Oh, do you know the story of John Newton? Yeah. Who but God can transform a man's life like John Newton from a life of immorality, from a life of blaspheming and rebellion? Oh, uh, a man that's been bound by alcohol, a man that had a filthy, vulgar mouth. Oh, who but God can do that and turn him into a songwriter and write the song Amazing Grace oh, and the guy and become, become a gospel preacher? Oh, who but God can do that, church? Oh, you may be bound by sin oh, and you may be lost in the world of sin, oh, but aren't you glad that Jesus reached down one day oh, and he snatched you up? by the fire of pit of hell I'm thinking tonight who but God do we need to praise him and worship him for what he has done for each and every one of us it is said I learned this when I was studying today I learned that in the, the, uh, it was said that amazing grace is the world's most famous song ever written did you know the world knows amazing grace many 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 funerals is amazing grace. Yeah. And there is a powerful message in that song. But one more thing I learned about amazing grace. In fact, it was just marked. Listen to this. In fact, it was just marked as being written 250 years of, of anniversary as of January the 1st, 2023. I'm sure you may not have known that. I didn't know that. Too. The 250 year anniversary was established this year of January the 1st. I, I'm going to tell you what song. What song can have an impact on the people for 250 years? I'll tell you what it is. It's the amazing grace because they have a message that reaches down in the heart of a man and a woman and changes her life. Who but God can do these great things? I'm telling you folks, he does song, part of that song says, I was blind, but now I see. Aren't you glad you see the light of day? I was blind, but now I see. In fact, Isaiah, he in 35, he tells us that he God opened the blinded eyes. God made the deaf to talk. I'm here, I'm sorry. And God made the lame to walk. And he made the dumb to talk. Who but God can do these great things? Sometimes I think we get immune to what God can really do. Because we've been serving God for so long and we just kind of take it for granted that it was just God that done these great things. But we need to praise Him. We need to thank Him. Who but God? Who but God can do these marvelous things? Who but God can do such miracles as open blinded eyes and make the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, the deaf to hear? Who but God? Somebody shout, who but God? Who but God? Who but God? Aren't you glad He's your Savior? I said, aren't you glad you're acquainted with Him? Aren't you glad He's your head? Heavenly Father, who but God can do such things as this? Well, glory. Who but God? Sometimes I think we fail to give Him praise for what He's done for us. Come on, church. Sometimes I think we just take for granted where He brought us from. I'm going to tell you folks, I would, might not have been as deep in sin as some, but sin, sin. You don't baby sin, and you don't uh, gauge sin. There's a sin, there's a right, there's a wrong, there's a heaven, there's a hell. Yes. And you may say, well, I never was a drinker, I never was a smoker. But whatever you was, it wasn't making you live and right, it was just as sinful. Yes. But who but God? I am so glad the God I'm preaching about tonight came inside of me and He transformed my life. See, again, Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. It, the Bible teaches us that God is a no respecter of persons. Now listen to me, church. Every one of us has a story. If I gave you a chance to tell your story, we'd be here all night. Individually, where God brought you from, who but God. And all of you have a story. We all got a story. And don't forget the story of that God changed your life. Don't forget that. Who but God can do such things as these? When people have said, your life is over, God's 
stepped into your life. Hey, man, uh, he stepped into your messed up life. Uh, I, if I were to ask you how many of you had a messed up life, a majority would probably raise your hand and say, Preacher, you don't want to know how deep in sin I was. No, I don't. Uh, but aren't you glad it's all level at the foot of the cross? Amen. I said it's all level at the foot of the cross. So he, the Bible said as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our sins from us. Now I'm going to show you something here. The east to the west, it's never ending. You can go north to south and there's an ending. You may have not have known that, but that's why the Bible declares that as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our sin. It is endless. It is endless. So I'm telling you the God I'm talking about who is our God. So I cry out again. Who but God can transform my life and change me? Who but God who can break the chain that had me bound? Woo, hallelujah. I tell you the chains of sin had me bound. But I was reminded of a song. The chains are now laying at my feet. Oh, hallelujah. The chains are now laying at my feet. Who but God can do such things as these? Amen. You can go to an alcoholic anonymous. You can choose. You can chew uh, cigarette candy or gum. I don't know what you call it. But you can try all kinds of things. And some of them will work. But they ain't none of them going to work like Jesus. Amen. Amen. There ain't nothing going to work like the God we serve. Yes. I will never forget another church I was pastoring. We had a lady that got saved. Just to give you a little background of her husband. He was in the mafia. True story. And I was shocked when he come and got saved and told me where he, God brought him from. I'm just, I'm trying not to act too shocked because he'd been in the mafia and he would order people to kill other people. And I'm thinking, this guy's coming to my church. Isn't it amazing that God don't judge you by how you used to live? God gloriously changed that man's life. He become an active worker in the church. His wife smoked about three or four packs of cigarettes a day. We had an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. And the power of God fell in the house and she was slain in the back, about there, about where you are, Steve. And she was slain in the power of the Holy Ghost. And when she came up, she said that nicotine taste and habit's gone. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! Who my God can do that, church? You know people that are bound by addictions and habits. They have a craving. And there's a drive and a desire to want this craving. But when the Holy Spirit of God, who my God, when the Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of you, He can take you and turn you inside and out and change your life forever. Amen. Oh, blessed be the night. Has there anybody in this house ever been bound by something? Way back here. You've been bound by something. Isn't it good to be free? Amen. Woo! Good to be free. <laughs> it's good to be free. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You won't, don't know how to appreciate being free unless you've been bound. Amen. You don't know how to appreciate being free unless you've been bound. And I'm going to tell you those chains of sin that was wrapped around me. I preached a sermon one time and I took about a 20 foot little chain. I started wrapping it all over my head and around my arms and around my legs. And I was walking around trying to preach bound. But all of a sudden I just... I uh, imagine the Spirit of God come upon me, Pastor, uh, and all of a sudden I began to shake that chain uh, and they fell at my feet uh, and I began to praise God and the people in the house thought, who but God? Who but God? Uh, some of you was bound like that. Uh, but I'm so glad Jesus set you free. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad that Jesus set me free. Uh, woo. Who but God? Listen to this. Uh, who but God can take a black heart uh, and wash it with red blood uh, and make it a white heart? Amen. Who but God? Yes. There's so many people that try to act like that they can do things equally to God. But nobody can do things equally to the God we serve. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, I'm so glad 
He changed that black heart with his red blood. Though, and now I have his royal blood flowing through my veins. Though. Thank God who but God though, can flow through us and touch us though, and give us victory over the enemy. By the folks that are bound, they'll try another substitution. And it'll last for a little while. But when you tap into the presence of God, He can change you indefinitely. Amen. Amen. I said He can change you indefinitely. Who of God can step out on the bow of your boat and calm the storms in your life? Woo! Hallelujah! Who but God? I'm talking to you tonight. Who but God? According to Mark chapter 4, a storm was brewing and Jesus said, Peace, be still. Yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. He'll calm the storms in your life. Amen. Who but God? I said, He'll calm the storms in your life. Who but God? Yes, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I have lost so much weight over the period of years of my life. I tell folks I've lost hundreds of pounds in my lifetime. And I just about found it all back. <laughs> it's a challenge. Especially when evangelize like we do. Everybody wants to feed you. You've got to do this. you got to come over and eat. Thanks to Jeff and Christy. You've got to come over and eat. <laughs> but we don't turn nobody down. We just try to be as modern as we can. But I said that to say this. That could be one of my biggest challenges. But God has helped us to be moderate and do, and sometimes we'll fall off the wagon. Yeah. You may have been on a crash diet, you never fall off the wagon. I confess, I fall off the wagon. But get back on the wagon and keep on. Yeah. But it's only God that gives you the determination to say, I've got to get a hold of myself. I, got, I tell somebody, if I don't take care of myself, nobody else will. We've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to do the best we can. But I'm telling you folks, that can be my storm. That may be your storm. What is your challenges? What do you face? Regardless of what you and I face, who but God can take care of it? Nobody but like God can take care of things in your life like that. Who but God? I love this. Who but God can walk from cloud to cloud? and put his fingerprints on the sun, the moon, and the stars and, and hang them out on nothing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who my God? Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! What a God we serve. I didn't know that the, I think it is the moon's bigger than the earth. Is that accurate? The moon or the sun? Something's bigger than, what is it? Somebody help me. They might be smart enough. Huh? The sun? Bigger than the earth? Look how big our earth is. We know about the earth, but the sun. And God can take it into outer space and hang it on nothing? I can't fathom that. With all I can say, who but God? He can put swing the stars out. Did you know that the Bible teaches us He knows every star by name? Who but God? My God, your God, named every star by name. Who my God knows the very hairs on your head? Now, he has to change calculations often for some of you. <laughs> but who my God knows every hair on your head? He knows every one of them. Who but God? I want you to just let that register in your mind. Who but God? What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Who but God? Amen. Amen. Who but God can speak to the demons? They have to flee. Right. Yeah. Amen. Look, I had an encounter about three times with demonic spirits. You've never had an encounter with the devil? You better be prayed up if you're going to come against the powers of the hell. But I had an encounter. My dad was pastoring a church. 
My wife and I had newly been married at that church. And we was in the bus ministry. My dad, he had a vision and a birth for a harvest. We didn't do one, two, three, or four buses. We was running eight buses every Saturday. We was out knocking on doors and inviting new children. And our church plateaued at about 519. But on that one occasion, I got a call from a mother of a little girl that we picked up for Sunday school. And she called in desperation. And she said that, can you please come pray for my husband? He's been to some kind of seance, some kind of witchcraft. And said, uh, he's an out of it. He is totally out of it. And all he's doing is just hollering, Mary, Mary. Only thing I could think referring to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and thought that she was the one that, he thought she was the one that could save him. Mary. And he was just totally, never had a dive open and just laid there. So, she called him. To be honest with you, I was a little apprehensive. Because I'm a young Christian. I don't know if I started ministering yet. And I said, yes, ma'am, we'll be there. In the name of Jesus, we'll bring the Lord with us and we'll conquer that old demonic spirit. That was probably one of my first challenges. And if I could describe the bedroom being somewhat like this. Now you've got to remember the bed's here and I'm between the wall and this bed and I only got about two foot. And I'm in this corner. Well, my father was a, a minister, my brother-in-law was a minister, and they came with me, so we had three. Well, they was on that side of the bed where they could get out the door if they had to run. <laughs> we didn't know what to anticipate. And I was over there praying, calling on the name of Jesus, and he shouted, Mary, Mary. And I kept on praying the blood of Jesus. It's not Mary, it's Jesus. And all of a sudden his wife said, the only thing that's holding him down is that cross on his neck. And I said, no. I said, I ain't going to allow a piece of jewelry to have authority over the name of Jesus. Amen. And I took on some holy boldness and I grabbed that cross, that chain, and I snatched it off in the name of Jesus. And when I did, he come up out of that bed and with his mouth is wild like a vampire. And he comes about four inches and bite me on the neck. And he went, Ah! I'm talking about demons. Now listen, demons are real. Don't you underestimate the power of the devil. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something happened that day. When he reared up and tried to bite my jugular vein, I could see him coming at me. I said, in the name of Jesus, with every thing and ounce of strength I had, I took my arm and I slapped him in the chest. And I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit that knocked him out, or I hit him so hard I knocked him out. I was panicked. And I'm confessing to you because it was my first experience. And I was trying to protect myself. And when I slapped that man on the chest, he fell slapped out, and he went to sleep and slept like a baby the rest of the night. I believe that the Holy Ghost allow that demonic spirit to tame down. Because his wife testified to me and said, I don't know if it was John or whatever her husband's name was, and he fell asleep, slept all night. And he was all right thereafter. We pleaded the blood of Jesus. And I told you that to tell you this, who but God can calm the demonic spirits of the enemy? You hear what I'm saying? I said, who but God can calm demonic spirits of the enemy. Oh, my God can do anything. Has your God can do anything? I said, can your God do anything? I'm telling you, saints of God, who but God, who but God can walk from cloud to cloud? Who but God? Did you know that the clouds, the Bible teaches this, that the clouds 
or his chariot. When you see the cloud, I drive down the road and I say, boy, look at the chariot God has. Look it up. It's in the Bible. The cloud or his chariot. Boy, God, I'm telling you, I just, I was putting this message, the Lord, about 5 o'clock this morning. I don't know if I've ever preached this message. If I did, it may have been one time. I don't know. And I, 5 o'clock in the morning, when I woke up, who but God kept ringing my head. And I says, Lord, I'm sure, I know I have a sermon on that, but I don't remember what it was all about. And then I got, to, I just got so antsy. I finally got out of the bed and I had to look up my outline and try to find what I was talking about and dreaming or thanking God about. And he kept saying, just preach tonight, who but God? Who but God? So this is what you're giving the Holy Spirit, put it in my heart about five o'clock this morning. And I'm saying, who but God can can calm the, the demonic spirits and bring them down. I'm telling you, saints of God, that there's not a demon and devil in hell that has the authority and the power over the God we serve. Amen. Amen. Not a demon in hell that can overcome the power of the God that we serve. So listen to me. If He's your God tonight, would you shout, He's my God. He's my God. He has all the characteristics of, that He can do anything. <laughs> Listen to me, church. Who but God can hold the whole world in the palm of His hand? <laughs> Who but God can use the earth as His footstool? Some of you said, is that the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. I'm going to tell you something right there. Who but God hold the palm, the world in the palm of His hand, use the earth as His footstool? I'm going to tell you all something. We underestimate how powerful our God is. That's why I shout tonight, who but God? Does that God live inside of you this evening? Does that God I'm talking about dwell inside of you this evening? Listen to me, church. In the wilderness, the children have nothing to eat. But I come to you tonight and say, Who but God may men fall from heaven? Yes. <laughs> Who but God caused a wind to blow quail into the camp? Yes. Oh, it could have been a blackbird or a dove, but quail, the white meat. He gives the best to his children. Who but God can blow a wind? and blow the quail right into the camp. You don't have to go to Walmart or any other grocery store to get you your food. God just give it to you from heaven. Well, y'all don't get excited, but I get excited that I'm serving that God. I said, I'm serving that God. He promises to take care of us. Who but God can do such things as these tonight? And when they were thirsty, who but God allowed water to come out of a rock? Wow. Woo! Who but God, when they were thirsty, allowed water to come out of a rock? Who but God? Isn't this awesome? I hope you've been encouraged by it tonight. When the Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace, who but the fourth man God Himself delivered them out of the fire furnace. I'm sure you, most of you know the story. When the Hebrew boys were told they got to bow, they said, O king, we're not afraid to tell you we're not bowing to your idol. We serve a true and living God. He said, you better bow to me. I'll heat this furnace seven times harder and I'll destroy all three of you. They said, do what you will. The God we serve is going to save us and protect us. And they had faith. Yes, he did. We're going to get done in that fiery furnace. Did you know that fiery furnace got so hot? Listen, the fiery furnace got so hot 
that the men that threw the three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace was consumed? Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. And then, the old king got to look at who but God showed up. Uh -huh. yes. Woo! Yeah. And the king says to his men, he said, did we not throw three men in that fire? They said, yes, O king, we did. He said, oh, I see four men, though, and that fourth man though, looks like the Son of God. Who but God can deliver three Hebrew boys out of a fiery furnace? My God can't do anything. Amen. 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 Who but God? I love it. Woo! Praise the Lord to who but God tonight. There's no one like the fourth man. There's no one like the fourth man. I declare to you again, God is no respecter of persons. God's resume is still intact. He can still do the same now that He did in the beginning of time. His resume has not changed. He still has the qualifications. He still has all the ability to do anything and everything you and I need to do. Do you need God to do something? Do you need God to show up in your life tonight and maybe minister to you in some special way? Do you have some kind of a need that you would say, God, you're the God of my life. Nobody can touch me like you can. And I'm asking you to touch me in this service tonight. Malachi 3 and 6. He says, For I am the Lord I change not. <laughs> I am of the Lord. I change not. Hebrews 13 and 8 again is Jesus said, Jesus Christ is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who but God can do such things as these? Who but God can take death, hell, and the grave and turn it into victory. Amen. <laughs> Are you glad you're free tonight? Yes. If you're not free, you can be free tonight. Yes. God can gloriously change your life. <clears throat> what of your needs are tonight? I'm saying who but God can reach way down His hand and minister to your need. What is it tonight? Would you stand in the middle of this building? Uh, who but God? So if you have a need tonight, would you just be open, be vulnerable to God and say, Lord, the preacher preached on who but God, who but you can do something special for me. What a God we serve. I said, what a God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Would you just lift your hand and say, What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Father, we're trying to encourage this body of believers that we have a God that can do anything. As we begin to say, What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. If you need something from the Lord tonight, I'm going to encourage you. We've been to sing in that song, What a Mighty God. You just come forward, we're going to anoint you and pray for you, and you're going to start shouting, What a God. Who but God can do such things? What a Mighty God. Let's worship as she leads us in that Lord.
different programs. But when physicians pass away and programs fail, who but God can do great exploits in your life. And I want you to leave here tonight thanking God. I knew the service would be a little bit different. But I just thought it would be good just to magnify and thank Him for who He is. Yeah. Say, Lord, don't ever let me forget who you are. Don't ever let me forget who you are. Don't ever let me forget where you brought me from. You changed my crooked path and made it straight. I was blind, but now I see. We've got so much to praise God for, church. Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Amen. Amen. Let's sing that little chorus. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day I live, I'm blessed. Amen. Let's worship together. She may lead us in that little chorus. I am blessed.
Lord, as we go forth from this place, help us, Lord, to go forth to serve. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.